Today we're going to learn how the math node power works in Blender. And I will show you different examples to understand how you can use it on your projects. So let's see. First of all, let me show you how this works with numbers. So let's go to Geometry Nodes, create a new profile. I'm going to close this panel. And we're going to create a simple text with a string to curve. Let's connect it here. And in a string in the input, we are going to use a value, value to string. So with this, we have a value that is converted in a string, in a text, and with this, it's converted to curve. So here we can see the value. And let's give some mesh. I'm going to center it in the middle. And let's give a mesh with field curve. As you can see, we can control a value with this. Now let's see how Power Node works. So let's bring Math Node and let's select Power. However, we cannot connect this here because this is a string. So we need to add here something. We can connect this directly here, but to understand better, I'm going to use a value. So we have a single value here, as you can see. And now if we add this here, so let's select here two, and let's explain how this works. So as you can see, two to the power of two equal four. So this basically, is what in math we used to do that is like x raise it to a number. So 2 raise it to 2 or power to 2 is 4. For example, 3 to the power of 2 is 9. So just remember that this node power is just the number that we add here that changes the result. So what you have to understand, I'm going to select 2 that more we increase this, the exponent, so 2 to the power of 2 is 4. If I increase this number, the number is getting higher, exponential higher, as you can see. For example, 2 to the power of 25 is this massive number. And if we select 1, it's the same always, as you can see. And if we decrease this number close to 0, I'm going to add more decimals, as you can see, is doing this effect. So the point is to understand how this works. And more we increase this, higher is the number. Now let's see this with a line to understand better how it works. So what I'm going to do right now is to create a line and to see the effect of the power in the line. So let's add a curved line. Let's connect it here. And we have a line here. And let's select, for example, this view. So let's add resample curve because we want more points. So we can change every point depending on the power. By the way, I'm going to select this view. So I'm going to select 1 and 0. And right now, I want to change the position of the points of this line. So let's use set position. And let's use offset. So first of all, let's use combine. And let's use here position. And let's isolate with separate. For example, let's work with, let's connect X to Z. So we can see this effect. So to understand how this works, now let's use power. Math. And let's select power. And now we can see that the straight line is getting a curve. So if you want the straight line like before, select 1. And there is any change because that means that this value x power to 1 is the same value that's why there is any change if i mute this you can see we don't have any effect however if i decrease this look i'm going to decrease with shift you can see that the first samples remember we have 10 samples actually i'm going to add more samples so we can have more resolution increasing this number as you can see so the main point, if we reduce power close to zero, less than one, we're increasing the first numbers, the first samples, as you can see. And if you reach zero, then it gets the inversion. And if we select one, it's like that. And if we increase more than one, we will get the opposite effect. Look. So as you can see, more we increase this, the exponent, the first numbers, the first samples, are really low. 
and then in some point increase exponential really fast. So with this node, we can play with the values that we have in a project to make them exponential really fast at the beginning, like right now, if we choose a number less than one, or we can make it really low at the beginning, and then really fast if we choose a number greater than one. Okay, maybe you're thinking, and how I can use this information in a real project? I'm going to show you. For example, what I'm going to do is to add another line here and a point to sample the position of this line. So we can play with the speed of this point. So to do this, what I'm going to do, first of all, is to group all this with Ctrl Z. And let's call it power curve. So you can remember that this is to see the curve of the power. By the way, what I'm going to do is to open here and connect this here and go out. So we can control the power with this value. As you can see right now. Okay, so here let's connect now with a joint geometry a point that follow a line. So let's add a line. Let's connect it here and let's use a point. And this point I want to follow this line. So let's use sample curve. So we can sample this curve and this point. That now we cannot see it, let's connect it here, is here. I want it in the position of this line. So let's connect position with position. So with the factor, I can make this point follow the line from 0 to 1. Now it's going up because this line is up. So I'm going to move this line here. So it's easier to understand this comparison. So I'm going to change these values, for example, minus 0 0.2. And this should be the same. However, what I want is this line half one meter. So basically what I'm doing is just moving this line in this direction. So now you can see that this point is going from zero to one with this. Now let's animate this point, the velocity, with a sin time. So now with this. In one second, we'll do all this path. Let's press play. As you can see, in one second, it's doing this. Because every second is giving a value to this input. And factor only has maximum one value. So it takes one second to do this movement. OK. I'm going to show the timeline so we can see better how it's changing. Okay, so we have this. Remember, if I press play, this is taking one second to move in this direction. And it's going in the same velocity. This is really important. It's linear in the same velocity. However, we can use the power node to control the speed of this point to make it exponential. For example, slow at the beginning and then faster, or faster at the beginning and then slow. So how we can do that? Just adding here a math node power. Let's select power. And I'm going to do to connect this value here. Why? Because this is the representation of this other power. So it's easier to understand. So thing like this curve is the animation to make it faster or slower, to add an easy in or easy out. So right now, if I select 1, it's going to go to the same velocity. Let's check it. Same velocity, linear. However, maybe I want to start really fast and then go slow. So in power, what we have to do? We have to decrease this. Remember, if we decrease the power, remember this is the power. If I'm decreasing this, you can see here that we will start fast and then slow. So let's come back at the beginning and press start. Okay, as you can see, it starts already here. So I'm going to select start at zero and select zero. Now let's press play. 
And as you can see, it starts really fast and then slow down. So it's the same like this. Because power is changing all the frames between here and here. So it's applying this curve animation. I hope you understand it better and you don't get lost, but I'm trying to do it the best I can. So if you want to make it really fast and then slow down, then decrease this really close to zero. So this means that it will start really explosive and then slow down until get the end. So let's check it. Boom. You can see it's like an explosion. However, we can do the opposite. If we increase this number greater than one, so let's say one is the same velocity. And if we increase this, we are starting making fast at the end, as you can see. Let's increase more. Foom. More. Foom. More, more. And then start really slow. Bah! So you get an idea, for example, who you can use power to make something go faster or start really fast and then slow down. If you're a member of my pattern, I will leave you this project so you can play and understand better how it works. If you want to see another example, here I have a curved line with 10 samples. And in these samples, in these points, I have an instance of a cube. So what we can do is to increase the scale of this cube with power to make it exponential. Oh, what we have to do is to use index. So if we use index, it's increasing linear. So that means that every cube is having one value every time. So if I disconnect this, you can see the first one disappear because remember the first one always is zero. So the first one will have zero, zero, zero. That means disappear. This one disappear. And the second we have one because index connected here. We have one, one, one in a scale. The second we have two in a scale, three, etc. However, if we connect power, let's see what happens. Let's use power and let's select one. One is the same, remember, it means it's linear. However, if we decrease this, what we are doing is getting this effect. It's like pushing here. If you want to see better, I'm going to join this better. So I'm going to say actually zero and one. So here you can see better this curve that before we have. Do you remember that when we were lowering less than one, we get this result? As you can see, it's the same here. And if we increase this, but to see this effect, we need to separate this. If not, we cannot see the curve. I'm going to separate more. And if we increase this greater than one, you can see that the last samples increase exponentially. So as you can see, we get the same curve. Do you remember? When we increase this number. So more I increase, more zoom out I have to do. As you can see. Look at the comparison between this one and this one. Only with an exponent of two. But this is because, remember, we have 10 samples. So the last one is number nine to the power of this number. So that's why we see this. If I select three, you can see that it's getting higher and higher and higher. So you can get an idea how to use power to get different scales or rotations or whatever you want. Now I'm going to show you the last example how to use power with materials. So here I have a grid with a material created, but I don't have anything. So let's use, for example, a gradient texture in linear. And let's connect it here in surface. So basically, a gradient texture in linear is just a gradient that goes from black from 0 to 1, as you can see. Okay, so what happens if we add here a math node and select power? If we select 1, remember, it's like not doing anything. If we move this, you can see it. 
However, let's see what happens if we decrease this number. Basically, what is happening is that we are adding more white, as you can see. And if we increase this greater than 1, we are adding more black. So, why? How this works? Now everything will make sense, trust me. So, let's represent this in a line. So, let's make a line like this. And this is 0. And this is 1. So, from here to here, we need a value. So, this is black. And this is white. So, when we reduce this, we are getting more white. Because do you remember what happens when we reduce this number? We are making this line. Something like that. So basically, when we decrease this, we are making these values up. So the points that are black are getting more gray and white. That's why when we decrease this, we are like deleting the black zone or making more white. However, if we increase this number greater than 1, we are getting more black because do you remember? When we were increasing this number, the power curve was something like this. So that's why we get black, because these values, the first values, are being pushed down, are being reduced. So this zone is black. So that means this zone. So basically the main point is that we use power in textures. If we reduce this number less than 1, we are making everything whiter. And if we increase this greater than 1, we're adding more black. So if you want to see better, let's add a next nice texture. Let's mute this and connect it here. And thanks to this, we can create more contrast. So 1 is the same. If I reduce this, it's getting whiter. And if I increase this, we're adding more black. At the same time, we have more contrast. Until we increase a lot and everything is getting black. Until the last values that are really close to 1. So this value will be in the curve something that is really close to here. So that's how you can use power in the materials. To play with the values and make it exponential. Don't worry, in future tutorials we are going to see more applications of this node in Geometry Node and the shaders. But I hope today at least you get the idea how this works and you have ideas how to use it in your own projects. If you like this video, I will appreciate that you give a like, subscribe and remember you can donate this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.